everyone! Hello! Today we would like to talk about the things that we read in August. Yep. I'm Jessica. I'm Christina. And you're watching Game of Tones. short stories though yeah yeah so i guess the first book we finished together uh -huh. was a spell for a chameleon by pierce anthony yeah and we made a whole video about our feelings yeah it's non-spoilery we mostly just talk about that's right rereading our childhood favorites and some sexism and fantasy <laughs> right of which there was a lot in that one yeah i gave it three stars i think mm, yeah. so uh, that was a book that got me into fantasy when i was a young person and so um and I already knew that I loved the book, but upon reading it again, I my eyes were awakened to all the sexism, so I don't think I would give it the, a full rating like I would right. you know, way back then. Um, and I do want to continue on with the series. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it just wasn't... I liked, I liked the idea of it. There's this boy, he lives in Xanth. Xanth is everything magical and everyone has magic. And whoever doesn't have magic has by a certain leave. age has to leave. And he doesn't have magic, so he wants to go on this quest quest to find this wizard to tell him what his magic is mm -hmm. so that he can be allowed to stay and marry this woman that he loves. Uh, yeah, it's full of sexism, though. <laughs> but it's cute and it's fun. Yeah. You just gotta get past that. Get past that. Which is, yeah. We go into more detail in, Hard it, in the other days. Hard for think it would be yeah because mm -hmm. it, it was published in, in the 70s yeah. yeah yeah so you know okay so i read three graphic novels good job dude the first of which is sweet tooth volume one out of the deep woods by jeff lemire it's a post-apocalyptic story where uh there's this disease where people like everybody's got it and everyone like is gonna die early eventually and it's like this horrible death the kids who have been born since then they're mutants, so like half animal sort of deal, and none of those kids get this disease. Yeah. Huh. And so the weird thing about this, the kid that we follow, is that they think he was born before the, the event happened. Interesting. And so he doesn't want to, like, if he gets captured, they're going to want to do, like, medical tests on him and stuff. Yeah. So I really, I think it was a solid first volume. And I would continue on, except that Hoopla doesn't have it. Yeah. So. And Jeff Lemire, he wrote Descender, right? What? He did? Yeah. I didn't even realize that. Well, I remember because I've clicked on his name on Goodreads before, and I saw Sweet Tooth on there. Mm. So that made me very interested, because I love Descender. Descender is amazing. Yeah. So that's, like, quite different from Descender. Like this AI space world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I really liked it, and it's a little more, I would, I would say graphic a little bit more than, yeah. um, Descender was, but... Is there, uh, people eating people in that book? No. Why do I think that? Mm. Well, because it's kind of like, um, you know, in The Walking Dead they have, uh, everyone has the disease. Yeah. And it's post-apocalyptic, and, um, it's kind of like a free-for-all in the same way. Gotcha. Like a lawless place now. And, yeah. Um, so, maybe that's why. What is that graphic novel where people eat people? I can't think of his name. There's one out there. I almost had it. Anyway. Oh, there is cannibalism in Walking Dead, though. But not because of the... Just because there's, like, a group of people who eat people. Oh, because they want to? It's not like a Jeffrey... Yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, it is kind It's of like not that. like a Donner <laughs> Party kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, what that would be. Donner Party, where they got trapped in the mountains and then they oh. had to resort to eating of each other. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it's not like that. Uh, they just they do just it because sur they want to do yeah, it. Yeah, and like to survive easier and they like round up people. You know, it's a whole tangent I'd get off on, but I would try it. <laughs> what? What do you mean? I mean, if you had to, if you had to, right? Not because I'd try it like no, I don't think I don't think psychologically I could get past that to try it. <coughs> knowing that it's a human 
But I mean, like, if I was in that kind of scenario, I'd be like, yeah, okay. You think you could eat someone to survive? Yeah, but I don't want to be involved in, like, the killing or the grinding up process, though. Just, like, brown it like some tacos and then just... I mean, I don't know. If I had to, to survive. But you just made it sound like if someone came to well, your door... Well, okay, there was them. this thing where this guy had to have his foot amputated. This is a real story, but it was, like, somewhere overseas. Did he eat his own foot? No, okay. he made tacos out of it and served it to his friends. No! But his friends had said, yeah, we would eat your foot. Oh my god! And so they were like, we ate his foot. But, like, it's legal because it was consensual and it was his foot and, like... Oh my gosh! No, I would not do that. I'm not a foot. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> if I amputated my arm, if I had to, because... No, not your arm. What part of my body would you need? You need some meaty part, like your butt or your thigh or something. Okay, if I had my butt removed, <laughs> you, would eat, you would eat it if I cooked it up and served no, it to you? No, no. You already said so. you would. Well, I mean, okay, here's the thing. Like, if I agreed to it and then, like, down the road, we, like, you had me over for dinner and then we ate and then you were like, by the way, that was my butt. You agreed to it once upon a time. You, no. Then I'd be like... Oh, okay. But, like, if you told me beforehand, I'd be like, I can't eat this. This is your butt. I would butt. be so mad if you fed me your butt or any part of I would not feed you any part of my body without you consenting. Okay. But if I did to you, you would be like, oh. But I want to know about it before I eat it. Because <laughs> then I'm going to think about it too much. I don't want it fatty either, though. I don't like fatty anything. I don't either. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> I'd eat your butt. Just don't tell me about it. Okay. What other graphic novel did you read? <laughs> okay. I thought a lot about cannibalism. I listened to a lot of murder podcasts, and it's just... I wouldn't eat people. <laughs> Asterisk. Wait. <laughs> Except in certain circumstances. <laughs> We eat other animals. So what I've gathered is that you want me to give you human meat, but don't tell you until afterwards. I'm interested in, like, how it would taste, but also, like, I don't want to be a cannibal, and I also don't want to know that I'm eating human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think it would be worse. Mm. Would it be worse or better to eat someone you don't know? Bad. No, worse. Worse. No, better. What? No, bet worse, because you wouldn't know if they wanted you to eat that part of them. I was just thinking, like, they're healthy. Like, yeah, that too. But you, like, I know you, and I trust your body, and, like, that it'd be quality meat. <laughs> okay. Let's move uh, on, please. I'm glad that I know this about you now. I feel exposed now. <laughs> People know my inner thoughts of eating people. All right. So I read two Lucy Nisley graphic novels. I don't know what that is. That's a person's name. That's the author? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. The first one was Displacement, a travel log, which is, they're both um, travel memoirs. Okay. Um, this is a story about how she took her grandparents who are in their 90s and have dementia mm -hmm. to um like on a cruise and how she took care of them whoa yeah the their parents kind of her grandparents signed up for it and then um everybody was worried about them so she told her aunts and uncles like if you pay for me to go on this cruise with them i'll take care of them and everybody was like yes go and she had a really rough time. And at the same time that she's doing this, she's also going back and reading her grandfather's memoir about being in um, World War II, I think it was. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So just reading. The same grandfather that's on the cruise. Too. Yeah. And so she's just reading about this time in his life when he was so, um, you know, alive and yeah. virile. Is that the right word? I don't know. Anyways, okay, that, so that one, and I, I gave them both four stars. I really enjoyed them. The second one is when she went to Europe and her, and that whole experience. I really enjoyed that one too because I've also been, been to, to Europe, Europe, and so, uh, like, our experiences mem uh, mirrored each other a little bit. 
Ooh. And uh, that was called Age of License. And they were both written in the same year. Mm -hmm. And so I would call them both like um, companion novels to each other yeah. because I don't, her other her other memoirs, graphic novel memoirs, are different. So like, she has so, more. Yes, yeah, she does. Um, but these are just like a certain period in her life, and I just think they go together really well. So did she take the cruise and go to Europe roughly the same time? So she went to Europe and then was home for a while and then took the cruise. Cool. So I think the Europe one you should read first. And Age it's a license. graphic novel. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, then I listened to Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow. I gave it four and a half stars. I thought the ending was excellent. It's the uh, second book after Nevermore, mm -hmm. which I gave five stars to. I absolutely loved it. Uh, this one didn't, um, like, wasn't as amazing for whatever reason. I can't, it feels like so long ago that I read it. The third book comes out in February. Oh, wow. Cool. And I don't. I don't think she's going to wrap it up in three books. I think it's going to be more like a Harry Potter situation. Huh. Yeah. But I don't know that for sure. I think I'm only projecting because it's very much compar comparable to Harry Potter in it a is. lot of ways. It's got a really cute story in, a, in In the best way. Yeah. In this book, she's... Nope. That's a spoiler. Okay, yeah. I can't say anything about the second one. Womp womp. plot. <laughs> So for In Real Life Book Club this month, we read Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston, mm -hmm. and I gave it 3.5 stars. Yeah, I gave it 5 stars. I absolutely loved it. So you basically have the first son, whose mother is president, and then you have the Prince of England, and they fall in love. And uh, they're like enemies, and then they fall in love. It's a really, really cute story. Yeah. But it did get me thinking about, like... What if there was a Prince of England who was gay mm -hmm. and how that would be handled in today's society? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Or even the, you know, the, even with it being legal here in the States, mm -hmm. you know, um, how the country could ha would handle like a first son who was gay or a gay president. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hope hopefully we will see that happen in our lifetime. Yeah. That would be really cool. It would. Uh, we listened to the audiobook. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a little while to get used to the narrator because he kind of sounds like a newscaster a little bit. Yeah, I could get that. Um, and so, uh, but actually, um, once I got into it, I got hey, used to it. I thought he did accents pretty well. I especially liked his Prince voice. I'm not, yeah, I did too. I'm not a fan of the Texas accent, like the classic George Bush accent I'm not I don't know what it is he I goes just, full George Bush he this. does and I'm really not a fan of it but <laughs> that's not on him that's just the accent itself that I've never really been a fan of sorry Texas sorry my one of my supervisors is from Texas but he doesn't sound anything like that no. like I wouldn't have known he was from Texas mm -hmm. but he doesn't have like a southern accent either he's just I don't know like like we don't mm -hmm. um how do we escape not having those Especially you, because your mom. Doesn't she have a southern accent? I don't think mom does, oh. but, like, my dad's side, the rest of my mom's family does. Especially yeah. my cousins. Mm -hmm. They really do. Yeah. But I will say, like, I've never thought that I've had one, but I've been to Pennsylvania in the summers before growing up, and people would be like, wow, you have such a southern accent. And I'm like, yeah, I think sometimes you wow. do. Weird. Even more than me. If I drink, I do. Or if I'm around my family, You started, I do. you boxed me while we were reading this. And I was talking in a Texas accent, and I couldn't stop. It was hilarious. Stop. I don't know what's wrong with me. I was like, who are you? I, yeah. Yeah. That was so funny. I, and I don't like it. Yeah. But. It doesn't bother me. I didn't, I wasn't bothered by it. Yeah. But. I find myself mimicking a lot of things. Mm. And you, I just naturally mimic you a lot of times too yeah the way i say things or yeah and the i don't know i can't think of a specific example but jessica colloquialisms yeah that was hard to say good job okay. anyway it was a really cute book though and i, I did enjoy it yeah. yeah i really like stories where it's um an american falls in love with the royalty and this was just like next level with it being the first son yeah and that whole um gay bisexual element and I really and the politics yes 
um, involved. I mean, I will say, like, romance is definitely not a genre that I usually gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. And especially, like, political things, I'm not really, like, meh. But reading this, I really did enjoy it. And cool. it's, like, the contemporary romance that I would just, like, not even care about. But I'm really glad. I'm really glad that we did read it, though, because yeah. I enjoyed it. And now I, I do want to read more. Yeah, I don't love contemporary romances, but this is, like, a specific one that I... Yeah. Well, well yeah. and I, I don't even watch, like, movies like that either. I like, do, yeah. oh, she falls in love with a prince, like, whoop de doo you know. I love that stuff. I don't. I just <laughs> I just don't watch stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was it was nice to read this and go, oh, I don't know, that was, that was a good story. Cool. Okay, yeah. Good. All right. Next. Okay, so I listened to God's Grave, Nevernight Chronicle, number two, by Jay Kristoff. It was so long. And there is so much fighting. And um, the plot is all like, who wins what fight? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because she's trying to climb her way in the ranks of this fighting arena in order to get to the people she wants to kill, ultimately. Okay. And so the book became about who, who won what fight and all the fights. And it was very, like, he writes fights really well. Like, you could just see it in your mind. And they're all really epic. Um, but they were so long, and I found, my, found myself just being like, okay, can I just watch the movie of this? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and I feel that way about really long fights sometimes. And so it wasn't any fault of the book. It was on me. But I liked it a lot, and the ending was like, <clears throat> and I need to know what happens next, and I can't, I don't have any idea how they're going to end it. I'm just yeah, blown away with how good Jay Kristoff is. I love his writing and I love his sense of humor and his stories are epic and unique and yeah this series has got me really excited good I read more I didn't finish the book but I finished a bunch of short stories in the songs of love and death she caught up to me plus one yeah so Jessica in our last wrap-up or whatever it was uh, I has to borrow it so I read a bunch and I uh, really enjoyed them she rated each story individually which I thought was genius I, I did I go back so and do that. well because on Goodreads you can't rate like each story and each author mm -hmm. so um, I just went through and made a note file in my phone and wrote out you know what it was and then what I rated it so the highest rated one was hurt me by L excuse me, Hurt Me by MLN Hanover. It was, like, creepy. This woman moves into a haunted house, and, like, things are kind of going on, and it's, I don't want to say a lot. It's a short story, so it's only a few pages, but, like, the ending was really good, and I was like, oh, which was the one that you really liked. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, and then I started to read The Wayfarer's Advice, and that one's, like, spacey. Um, so I'm really interested that, That'll in that be the one. first one set in space. I'm excited to get through yeah. that Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I really like them. They all kind of have that dark twist to it. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's only been one that I've been like, meh. And it was Rooftops. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, she falls in love with a superhero. But even that was still enjoyable. Though, yeah, same. You know? Mm -hmm. So there's not been one that I didn't like. And yeah. this really helped me where I was, like, in my reading. I was just feeling like, meh. But being able to, like, finish a short story each time, I was like, and to, like, a fresh new one, you mm -hmm. know? That was really nice. But so far, I've really enjoyed this, so. Me too. We're gonna read it together. Yeah, so I'm gonna continue on and then yeah. give it back to you. Yeah, that sounds great. Cool. So, that's it. Yeah. I don't think September is gonna be much better for me because we're going to book net fast in, like, four days. Whoa. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Four days we will be flying to BookNet Fest. So I'm not going to read anything while I'm there. I already know that. And uh, also, we do have a readathon. Yeah. September is Tome Infinity and Beyond Round 3. Uh, so I'm excited for that. But me too. Yeah. I hope that we've done okay. We we're both feeling a little blah. Yeah, it took us a little bit to get into it, motivated. Jessica shot a wedding all day yesterday. I did. Yeah, for like eight and a half hours or something No. Like that. Yeah. 11.30 to 7.30, that's eight hours. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. No wonder. You put in a full day of work, dude. I did. It was rough. Yeah. And now I have to put in a 
more full days to edit. <sighs> People wonder why wedding photography is so expensive. Yeah. How many pictures did you take? Um, over 1,400. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to go through each one, pick the ones I want to edit, then upload those into Lightroom, edit them, and then put them onto my hard drive, and then upload those kitties. That's and then lot. arrange them, because usually they're out of order. Right. That is, that is a lot. So, there's your friendly photographer lesson. Also, you're going to have them for the rest of your life, and you want them to yeah. take their time. Yeah. And to do a good job. Yeah. yeah. Ours took a, a, a little while to come back, and we were like, nope, oh, totally Yesterday, fine. she asked me, she said, how long do you think it'll take for them to get back? A couple of days? <laughs> and I was like, oh, so... Usually I could have them out within a week, but I'm going to Orlando. Even, even a week is great because I think we waited like at least a month, if not longer, for mm -hmm. ours. A month or two, I would say for sure. And like, that's fine, dude. So I was like, it could be two weeks because um, I don't like to sit on them. If I yeah. if I have stuff to edit, it's like it weighs on me. But. Yeah. The photos do turn out better the longer I wait to edit them because I'm more objective. Right. I'm not like emotionally attached to it. Like kind of removed from the situation. Yes. And then I can look at them with a fresher eye. Right. Um, anyway. Good luck. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. When you play the game of tomes, you read or you die. Come be our friends. Social media links in the description below. And we hope you're reading a great book. Bye. Bye. Like, we we didn't do that great. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Lost what felt like it all in a game. Every man I've measured gotta hurt me before I could.